Hey folks, if you're looking at the new iMac M3 for video editing and doing any graphic intensive work, this thing will get the job done, but I'm actually going to recommend everyone to go and look at the Mac Studios, the base model. You're getting a lot more bang for your buck with that Mac Studio. As long as you have an external monitor, you can get a studio display for $1,500 now. LG has a ton of competitors that are very studio display-ish and you could get all set up for almost around the same price as this fully loaded iMac. This iMac has one terabyte of storage. It's got the full 24 gigabytes of RAM, and it did okay when it came to video editing and exports. But if you're working with 4K footage, if you're doing large projects, you're just gonna be waiting a long time for those exports, where now I'm used to the Ultras and the Max chips. The amount of time that this iMac was taking to render some of these sessions, I had done them in the M1 Max, and you're getting them done in about half the time. So all of that time adds up in the end. You know, a minute here, a minute there for your exports. Because if you're like me, you're doing a lot of revisions, you're watching it, you're going back, you're exporting again, and all of that time builds up. And that's your quality of lifetime. I've probably spent two years of my life waiting for exports, just waiting. And now these new M chips are just so fast, but you really need the RAM behind it to give it that extra oomph, especially when you're doing video editing and graphics stuff. So let's check out the iMac. This is a great all-in-one family computer. Bring this home, your family is gonna be stoked. It comes with everything. You get the keyboard, you get a mouse, you got a nice screen. Sound is pretty good. There's a six speaker array in this thing. You've got microphones up here. You've got a webcam, 1080p. The only thing I'm really not liking about this iMac is the amount of ports. They totally jacked you on ports this time. The low base model only has two USB-C ports, which I don't know what you can do with that. Like that's gonna be gone instantly. That was one of the things I hated on the MacBook Air. You only had two ports. So you're living in dongle world. You have a hub or something so that you can just plug in another hard drive once in a while. This is how Apple, I think, has kind of kept the cost down of these iMacs over the last 10 years. They're, it's, it's super similar. They've always come out as $1,300 to $1,500. But now with these new displays, you got the 4.5 inch retina display. Everything is better, but they've taken away a bunch of the ports probably to keep the cost down. So that's the only give and take I see with this thing, but for an all-in-one machine, I think this is great. I put it up against the base model MacBook Pro. That also lost a port. So now you've only got two ports in that. On the MacBook Pro, you still have an SD card reader, which is crucial for video editors. If you're a filmer or content creator, you need that SD card reader. It is such a pain to go and have to find the hub, the dongle, your SD card reader, whatever to plug it in. And then hopefully you've got an extra port on there. That's where the problems come with less ports. Just the other day I was running the M1 MacBook Pro. It has three USB-C ports and I had all of them in use. I was bringing footage in, I was putting it on storage, storing it onto the backup on the other side. So it's just really nice to have those extra ports. We kind of mentioned the price. This has the one terabyte storage option with the fully loaded RAM option, and that brought it up to $2,300. Right there, you're looking at $300 over a Mac Studio. You can get a Mac Studio with so many cores for GPU and CPU, way more than the iMac. The Mac Studio, I think, is really the way to go for video editors that are doing large projects, that want to grow, that are shooting on 4K cameras, because you know 8K cameras are right around the corner, and beefing up that RAM whenever you can, if your budget allows it, always give yourself more RAM than you think you're gonna need because all of this stuff is just getting more RAM intensive. All the websites that we go on, all the tabs that we leave open, those are all eating up your precious RAM. So the iMac M3 only goes up to 24 gigs of RAM. That's kind of a setback, whereas with the Mac Studio, you can keep upgrading all the way up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, which is insane. You can also do that with the MacBook Pro now, the M3, the M3 Max, 
with the top of the line stuff. I'm still rocking the M1 Max. It is so good. These, all these M chips are just so good now. In this video I did up here, I put the iMac up against a 2012 Intel machine. It took two minutes to re-encode a 4K file to 1080p on the iMac. The old iMac from 10 years ago, two hours it was gonna take. That's what I'm talking about. These two hours of my life that I'm sitting twiddling my thumbs waiting for these files and these new machines just crank it out in a minute. So we are super lucky to have this technology now. We're seeing some really incredible speeds. We're seeing some incredible machines coming from Apple and they're just getting better and better. The prices are staying similarly the same. Let's check out that speed test where I put the iMac up against that base model M3 MacBook Pro and we'll just kind of get a sense of speed and how important that RAM really is. We'll do an H.265 export and we'll also do a ProRes 422 export. And for H.264, we will do it in the YouTube 4K preset. Okay, that took a while. They, they both finished pretty much the same time. They were off by 15 seconds. Uh, also, while the export was going on, the MacBook Pro fans kicked on, just to let you know. So let's try another export in ProRes and see if it does any better on that. Okay, they both did a little better with that, probably due to the ProRes encoder built into these M chips now. And you can see here that the MacBook Pro was only 7 seconds faster. So you're getting about the same speeds out of Premiere uh, with both of these machines. So let's open up an After Effects session now. We'll do the same type of thing. We'll playback, render, and export. Opening these up and pressing play right away, we can see they are having a little bit of problems where frame rates are at five. The MacBook, it's also at five. So it's chunking along, but you can see now it finally hit real time on the MacBook Pro and on the iMac now. So why don't we do a couple export tests real fast and see how fast these guys are. Also just to check, let's see what our memory and performance settings are at for each of these machines. So the iMac has 21 gigabytes allocated to its memory, while the MacBook Pro has six gigabytes allocated. And you were able to see that the MacBook was still beating the iMac, even though it has more RAM available. So let's do this H.264 uh, export. All right, the iMac won that challenge. Uh, it beat the MacBook Pro by a good 45 seconds. So let's just try ProRes export, see if it does any better. Okay, we just wrapped up. The iMac beat the MacBook Pro by, um, by a good minute. Uh, so you can really see where that RAM 
is handy, especially in 3D rendering stuff, After Effects, Blender, Cinema 4D. You're going to definitely want to bump up that RAM as much as you can, as much as your budget can afford. So another thing is that the MacBook Pro, the fans are kicking on all the time. So this thing, it's not running too hot. But that is something to uh, be aware of. You're going to have some fan noise from this base model MacBook Pro. So let's open up DaVinci Resolve session real fast. All right, so our last little session didn't work so hot, so we're just gonna try exporting these large files again in DaVinci. We'll do the quick, quick export, H.264. Okay, the iMac beat the MacBook Pro again. I think we're really seeing that extra RAM showing its face. Uh, beat it by about 30 seconds this time. Let's do, let's do one more quick export just to see how well it likes ProRes. Okay, once again, the iMac has won this export test. So I think we're really seeing that RAM helps out a lot. So very impressive results with that speed test. You can really see how the RAM on that iMac just makes this thing so much faster when it comes to exports and just speed and usability over everything. Plus, this has got a little more wiggle room, room to grow. This is gonna last you longer until it really starts chunking along on these newer programs as they're coming out. The MacBook Pro is a great laptop. I think it's way better than the MacBook Airs. You've got more usability for video editors and video shooters. You got that SD card reader, which is huge. And these new M3 chips just rip. So, so they are all good options, but what I like about the MacBook Pro, SD card reader. You also have an HDMI out, so you can pipe that to a bunch of different displays. So that's kind of like your modular computer that you will take to your studio, plug it all in, don't move it, you know, keep it in clam mode. So that's a great option if that's the type of style you want. The more RAM you can pump into that MacBook Pro, the better the performance is gonna get. And you can go all the way up to, like I said, 128 gigabytes of RAM, which is insane for a laptop. But once again, I think the Mac Studio for us video editors and graphic designers, anyone who's doing motion graphics, any of that stuff, you definitely wanna look at that Mac Studio it just seems like a much better value for us content creator folks and people who just want to make stuff and not be waiting around for exports at the end of the day. As you can tell, exports and render time are the bane of my existence and I just have no more patience for this stuff knowing that there is tech out there. Everyone wants these machines to be the best and baddest things and when you look back at what we were using five, ten years ago, you were just like, Oh my gosh, this is insane how fast these things have gotten. So you really can't go wrong with any of these choices. They're all going to be great machines. They're all going to be super speedy and super snappy, but it's really one of those renders, exports, all that high intensive stuff. That's when you see the big boys really take off in speed. I hope that helped get some eyeballs on this new iMac. This is a great family computer. If you are thinking of purchasing one of these, definitely get that higher bump up so you can get a few more ports. Those ports are really going to come in handy after you start using this and plugging in hard drives. And there, you can never have enough ports. And also I would say look into a good hub or a good dongle for one of these things because you're gonna need it eventually. You're gonna have too much stuff to plug in. So thanks for watching everyone. Hit that subscribe button because we are gonna be testing the M3 Max. I'll see you next time. Take care.